Should be all set there and live on Facebook and live on YouTube. And there we are. Just confirming everything looks just great. So, folks, if you're just joining us, thanks for being here. And we are just going to, uh, you know, wait and allow a few more folks to join in. And um, as you know, this is our uh, our regular Meet the Outfitter session, and we're really excited about tonight. We got uh, Lewenbergers uh, with us tonight, where they run both Outposts and Main Lodge at um, at Cag Lodge. So we're just gonna shoot the breeze. Here. Jamie, you want to say hi? Hi, how you doing? Uh, welcome everybody to the to the show. Yeah. So I can see people are now joining in here, and um, just going to make a note here. I'm just going to type in so people know. So, folks, uh, if you have any questions or comments, just type them into the comment box. I just posted that in there. And, yeah, we're all set there. So we're super. We're super. So what we're going to do, folks, is we got about one more minute here uh till we get, you know get officially started so if you've uh if you've had a chance to see these before you know how this works we're featuring different ontario outfitters a chance for you to you know get to know what your options are for fishing hunting family vacation uh, but you get to do so from the comfort of your own home and you could be watching us live right now which is great you get a chance to ask questions and we'll answer them in real time and if you're watching this on recording, which could be on Facebook recording, this could be watching it on YouTube, that's great. We're going to have everybody's contact information, you know, at the end, as well as in the show notes. So um, in the event that you aren't watching this live, that doesn't mean that you still can't get a hold of, uh, of Jamie and, and find out what your options are. So I I, uh, I I laugh at myself here, Jamie, because I, I do look at myself in the camera once in a while, and I see myself scanning around. And what people don't know is I got multiple <laughs> monitors here, and um, maybe I should push them further back so I can't be so obvious as I look from screen <laughs> to screen. So, all right. So listen, let's um, let's get started officially. So hi everybody, my name is Scott. I'm the Canadian Fisherman and uh, we've been doing Meet the Outfitter sessions for just the last few months where you, someone who probably likes the outdoors and fishing and hunting, get an opportunity to meet some of our great Ontario outfitters in the comfort of your own home. Uh, we do these sessions live so you can have an opportunity to get to know the outfitters and maybe ask them some questions that are of interest to you. We'll answer those in real time. You do that just by putting in your comments, okay? So just like you would normally post a comment on Facebook or on YouTube, you pop that in and it's going to come up for me. Um, here, are Rob, Rob, uh, I'm going to say it name, but it's Rob Grostafun or Grostafun from uh, Michigan saying hi. So, hey, Rob. And so if you have any questions or comments, you pop that up. And uh, and Rob, we're looking forward to having you guys back in the country as well. We got a little bit of ways to go there, but uh, but we'll get there. And so if you got your questions for Jamie, we'd love to hear them. But uh, maybe with, before I, I flip the screen over, um, let's say, first of all, thank you, Jamie, for joining us tonight. And welcome to the show. Why don't you say hello to the folks? Okay, I'm glad to uh, be here. I said... Uh... A great opportunity to um, talk about the business and and what's going on and uh, I'd like to thank God for for this opportunity and welcome to everybody joining the show yeah yeah thanks yeah it's it's super so what we're gonna do folks I'm gonna just put on another screen here because um, Jamie's been kind enough to send us some photographs so will help maybe put a picture to the words here so up on the screen here, you can see the information. We'll slide across here. So, you know, Jamie, we've got a picture there of your uh, one of your planes, but why don't you start us off by giving us the big picture. I call it the executive summary. Why don't you tell us about your business and, and where you are and how long you've been operating? Okay, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, basically, Lewenberger was started uh, by my grandfather, Ernie Lewenberger Sr. in 1960. Um, he was an immigrant from Switzerland. Uh, he basically started out with uh, a couple canoes in a tent, uh, a few tents, and got into the outfitting business. 
he acquired a, a small airplane shortly after. Um, basically went around to different lakes uh, and fished them. And if there was uh, if there was good fishing there, then he, he built camps. Uh, and back then, the, the, the camps were basically, uh, he had a, a plywood floor and four foot walls and a tent on top of them. That, that's how the camps were back then. Um, you know, as time went on, he, he acquired uh, more and more lakes. Uh, today we're we're sitting at uh, we do have 17 outpost locations. However, we're we're utilizing uh, 14 of them, uh, and then we also have a flying lodge. So, um, my grandfather, um, in the late, in, he passed away in the late 90s, uh, and it was taken over by his sons, uh, Ernie and Malcolm uh, Lewenberger. And then um, they continue on the business. And then in the mid, uh, the mid 2000s, um, it was taken over by Malcolm and his wife, Claudine Lohenberger. And uh, today with the, uh, with the unfortunate passing of Malcolm a year and a half ago, uh, the company is still family owned uh, by Malcolm's wife, Claudine Lohenberger. So, um, Basically, this is uh, 60 years in, in business for Lewenbergers. Awesome. And, um, and we should clarify. So, we, you know, you've got the outpost camps. You've also got, um, you know, CAG, CAG Lodge, which we'll talk about. But you guys also run the air service as well, correct? That's right. That's right. We have, uh, like I said, we have outpost camp, the lodge, and then we also have, uh, own and operate our own air service. So. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's great. That's lots of stuff. So let's click, click along here and uh, maybe why don't you tell us in, in just in case you can't see the map that well, why don't you tell us where you're located? Okay. Lewenberg is located in Nakina, Ontario, which is at the end of uh, highway 584, about 40 miles north of uh, Geraldton, Ontario. They went to Geraldton pretty much at highway 11. Um, so the driving distance from Toronto, we're looking at the, in the neighborhood of around 13, 13 hours, uh, about four, three and a half to four hours north of, uh, northeast of uh, Thunder Bay and, uh, approximately seven and a half to eight hours north of Sault Ste. Marie. So if you're in the lower, lower Michigan area, you know, you'd be looking at, uh, uh, approximately 13 to 14 hours uh, drive up to Nakina. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for the Americans, I would imagine most of them, when they're coming up, they're crossing over at the Sioux um, and, and uh, you know, or, or coming up around the, the far side there. I've made that drive myself uh, many times uh, and, and good good roads, right, Jamie? Like, I mean, essentially, like right up to the very end, you're you're really on well developed highways. If people are thinking about that, oh, for sure, for sure, it's a, it's all paved road uh, all the way right up into the town of Nikina, um, and then you have about three miles of gravel road out to the air base, uh, and it you know it, it's in good shape also. So, yeah, sure. there's no no problem with the road getting up there. Yeah. So now, now people, if you're making a 13 hour drive, you're, you're probably not driving up the morning of. So typically where are the people staying the night before, you know, the day before they fly out? Uh, see if you're coming, if you're coming up from, uh, I see so in the Michigan area, a lot of people stay, you know, maybe in the Sioux or, or Wawa or White River area, and then they make the, mm -hmm. the next trek the next day. Um, but tell you, said some guys, uh, some guys are do the whole, the whole trek in some day. Sorry, in one day. Um, if you're coming up from from the Toronto area, a lot of guys will maybe make it up to the Cochrane area and then drive up, uh, drive the rest of the way the next day. So, yeah, yeah, great, super. So, uh, really, really an accessible location there. And then, of course, that's the jump off spot. You know where where you're gonna you know fly in there. So, yeah. why don't we start off talking about you know your main lodge? Why don't you tell us about Cag Lodge? Okay, Keg Lodge is uh, located uh, to about a 35-minute flight, uh, 75 miles northwest of Nikina, uh, and the lodge sits on about 10 acres of land. Uh, we have five guest cabins there, and then as well as the main lodge, as well as uh, three uh, staff cabins. Um, all of the guest cabins are set up with uh, 
all the, all the housekeeping essentials. You've got the electric fridges, you've got propane stoves, all your cooking heating utensils are there. Uh, wood stove for heat. Uh, you've got 24 hour electricity, indoor plumbing. Uh, you can access Wi Fi at the main lodge. Uh, the main lodge is set up, uh, there's a dining room in the main lodge as well as the kitchen. Um, you know, for the guests that uh, either choose the, the American plan or the, or the modified American plan. Uh, we offer three plans at the lodge. Uh, one is the, the uh, housekeeping, where basically you bring all your own food uh, and you do all your own cooking. As I mentioned before, all the cabins are set up for, you know, for guests to do all their own cooking. And then we also offer the full American plan which is uh, you can you can go into the lodge for your meal. Uh, the lunch is you, you can either be a, a take a box lunch or you can have the option of doing a shore lunch. And uh, for the modified American plan is you look after your breakfast and your lunch and then you go into the lodge for your dinner. You know, and that's kind of, you know, some, some people kind of like that. Um, you know, if they want to head out fishing first thing in the morning, they don't have to be back at a certain time for uh, for breakfast or, or even lunch. And after a, day, after a morning and afternoon of fishing, you head into the lodge, have your, your meal to cook for you. You don't have to cook, you don't have to clean, and you can head right back out fishing if you want. Yeah. And so... Um... You know, if we, if we want to touch on that a little bit, so if, if people are going to bring in their own food on the, on the housekeeping, that's when we should probably identify that, you know, you can't bring everything. You got to have some consideration for the weight. Would you mind commenting on kind of what your weight guidelines are for people flying in? Yeah, we, uh, we ask people to uh, try to keep it down to 120 pounds per person. You know, that includes all your gear, your food, and, and, uh, and you know your beverages, etc. Um, you know we we do we do have uh, beer and water and and whatnot. Uh, you know if, if people want bottled water, but the water at Keg is is potable, it's drinkable, it's it's actually really it's uh, re really good water. So um, yeah, so 100, 120 pounds a person. Um, you know, if you're over a little bit, uh, you know, we, we, we try not to try not to penalize everybody, but you know, if, if, if guys get excessive and stuff like that, then, then there's, yeah. you know, there, there's a the possibility of an over, an overweight charge. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So listen, Jamie, I'll tell you, I, I personally think 120 pounds is generous, right? I think you can do, uh, real well with that, especially knowing that you can drink the water because, you know, liquid is, is sometimes the biggest one. So you think about, you know, you, you bring yourself some, you know, set to flavor some water if you want, you, you know, you're good to go. So, so housekeeping, you're, you're, you're bringing in your own, your own food. And I'm, you're right. I think a lot of people these days are liking that modified American plan where they want to take care of some of their meals, but it's great to go in and have someone else, you know, kind of serve me once a day. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And even, um, you know, we even have a few guests that um, say that they may be on the housekeeping plan, but, you know, they may they may decide, well, you know, maybe we'll go into the lodge for, for dinner for maybe one or two nights throughout the week. And, you know, as long as we know in advance, um, you know, that, that, that can also be arranged. So Super. Now, so when I stay at CAG Lodge, what body of water am I on? What are my fishing opportunities there? Okay, you're on, you're on Kaganogamy Lake, uh, short form, short form Kag. Uh, up there, you can fish for obviously walleyes, uh, northern. Um, it is one one of the two lakes in the Nikita area that uh, do, do have lake trout in it, so you can fish for lake trout, as well Great. as uh, as well as you can uh, try for some speckled trout up where there's the river leaves Kag. Super. So um, give us an idea. Um, is that big, big lake? Keg, is, is it a big body of water? It is. It is a very big body of water. You're, you're looking at, uh, it's about 12 miles long, and the longest part is about 12 miles wide. Uh, it's, um, it, 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 is a, it is a big lake, a deep lake. It uh, goes down to, probably down to about 180 feet. And mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of bays, uh, lots of islands. You know, even if the wind does come up, uh, you know, you, you can still get out, uh, you can still get out and, and fish, you know, even back up and behind the lodge or, you know, on the lee side of the island and, and whatnot. So. 
So, you know what, Jimmy, one of the things that I didn't, didn't get, a, I just forgot to ask you when I was chatting with you earlier is, you know, do you have guide service available for CAG if people wanted it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. We do offer guiding, um, you know, if, if people want it. Uh, for new guests, uh, we offer uh, a half a day of free guiding. Uh, we take them out wow. and just kind of show them the spots. Um, we, we do have the majority of our guests are, are repeat guests. So, you know, they kind of already know where they're going and what they're doing. But uh, yeah, we, we do have uh, guiding services available. And then when uh, even when the uh, new guests come in, uh, you know, we'll just have a little orientation with them and we'll give them a, a detailed map of the lake. And um, yeah, just kind of show them where the fish are and where they're biting and, and whatnot. Good stuff. So listen, let's, um, and, and folks, if, if you do have any questions about this, let us know. And if you're just joining us and you want to ask a question, even if we've covered already, we'll get back to it. So if we slide over here, let's talk a little bit about the, the outpost camp. So I think what you said was that you've got 17 kind of in the stable, but you're running 14 right now. That, that's uh, right, yeah. So, you know, without going into every lake, you know, could you maybe identify what are some of the, you know, the main differences, uh, you know, main features and benefits of the different lakes? Okay. Um, some, uh, you know, some, some of the lakes are, are bigger than others. Uh, some of the, the outpost camps, they offer the, um, or the, obviously they all, they all have walleye northerns in them. Uh, okay. we have, uh, four lakes that we advertise for, uh, brook trout fishing also. And, uh, you'll find the brook trout in the, in the rivers that, uh, flow in and out of the lakes. Um, all the cabins are set up with the, uh, hot gold running water showers. Although all the outpost cabins have the uh, outhouses for toilets, uh, mm -hmm. they have um, the majority of them have uh, solar lighting, uh, and then some with propane lighting. Um, right. Usually two, two, two or three bedroom, two or three bedroom cabins. Um, all your boats and motors are all included. All your gas is all included in the price. Uh, you have your full sized um, propane stoves. And then you have uh, propane fridges, and uh, all, plus all your cooking and eating utensils are all also. So, and if you're if you're on um, if you're at an outpost location for for seven nights, uh, we also provide a, a check trip midweek. So usually that happens on a, on on a Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, depending on where you are. We'll come in midweek, and. Um, yeah, we'll just bring in, uh, restock the camp, uh, maybe do a little bit of upkeep, such as cutting grass, firewood, etc. cetera. Uh, if you want ice, um, ice is complimentary to all our guests. Um, mm -hmm. You know, keep your beverages cold and, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty much, um, yeah, all, all the essentials of, uh, of the, the fishing output camp. That's awesome. So sounds to me like when you're looking at, you know, the lake options, you're going to think about, you know, you know, group size, you're going to think about species. And I think that's, that's important that you mentioned the brook trout, because I know you're, you know, you're up in the, you know, kind of the Albany uh, shed up there. And that's a real unique opportunity, right? So um, the chance to get out there and do some brookies is, is pretty impressive. Oh, for sure. For sure. Actually, we've had uh, a few guests even this year. They've been out for brookies already. And uh, yeah, they were, they were quite pleased with uh, with what they caught and, and the sizes and, and that. So um, yeah, that definitely adds uh, adds an extra opportunity, uh, you know, to the fishing if you just uh, want to take a break from the walleye in Northern. So. Oh, it's a good problem. All right. So here, a question from uh, Fish Quest says, wants to know, how's the fishing been on CAG this year? We're looking for a fishing report. Oh, the, the, the fishing been uh, the fishing been good. Um, I was in there the other day. Uh, the, um, I asked Matt, our, our manager, um, that, that that day was a little slow for the walleyes, but you know people were catching a lot to eat. Uh, we have a an actual um, family up there now, a family of nine. Um, they've really been targeting the bird, the uh, the lake trout. And uh, yeah, they're they're just having they're just having a ball with the lake trout, and you know, guys are guys are catching a few pike, and so yeah, the the, the fishing the fishing been good. So super. Uh, Chris says, um, you know, do you have options for sat phones. I think we're talking about the outpost there. Do you provide or rent communication devices for people if they need them? 
Oh yeah, yes, we do. We have uh, satellite phones for uh, for rent at at the airbase if uh, if someone wants to rent one. So. Super good stuff. So I think we've shown a couple pictures of uh, of the outside uh, of cabins. I think I got uh, a couple more. So you got a, you know a variety of size, you know, and some makeups. Let's talk a little bit about the inside of the camp. So so you mentioned it. Oh, let me get back on here. You mentioned it, but it sounds to me that you know, they're really well equipped, you know, fair statement. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned before, like, uh, you've got your propane stove, propane fridges, um, all your cooking and eating utensils are there. Um, you know, sofas, uh, barbecues, uh, barbecues at the camps, um, fish cleaning stations, um, yeah, wood stove for heat. And, um, yeah, like I said, solar, solar, or propane lighting, as as I mentioned earlier, uh, most of them are solar lighting. So, um, yeah, it's uh, kind of almost home away from home. Listen, a uh, question from Brian. Um, for the outpost camps, what are you offering as far as, as boats? What's your typical outpost boat look like? Okay, at, at the outpost, we're running 14-foot uh, aluminum boats with either a 9.9 or 15 horsepower uh, motors. Beauty. What about at CAG? Did you have a different boat there? Uh, at CAG, we're uh, running 14-foot uh, and 16-foot uh, aluminum boats with uh, 15 horsepower motors on at CAG. Right, yeah. Yeah, bit bigger, bigger, bigger water. You know, you got to get some speed out there. And, yeah, uh, yeah they it's uh, safe to say that, you know, your general guideline would be, you know, kind of two anglers per boat. Is that the goal? Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, pretty much two, two anglers, two people per boat. And yeah. What about um, uh, like uh, PFDs? Is, uh, do the anglers expected to bring their own or do you provide? Uh, no, that uh, every, every, everybody, everybody brings their own. So. Got it uh todd here says great cabins and the fishing was crazy good so there's there's a todd must be a, a happy customer there for you <laughs> so so here's another shot there so you can see you know uh, dining areas there uh kitchen facilities there so i mean yeah i mean you know we, i always laugh because we call these outposts but you know really they're just cottages just there's no other cottages around that that's right if you're if you're at uh uh, the, the, the outpost locations, as I said, we're using uh, 14 right now. Um, uh, we have uh, 11 lakes that were the only camp on the lakes. So, um, yeah, if you want to be by yourself, you can uh, you can choose one of those ones. Super, super stuff. All right, let me take a look here. What we got here now? Let's let's talk about oh, let's talk about fish. All right, so uh, you know, I think we're going to cover the, kind of the four main species here, but. You know, one of the common uh, questions that I get from people are, um, and, and it's not a binary choice here, but is it a trophy lake or is it a numbers lake? When it comes to Northern Pike, you know, where do you think your options fall? Um, I, I would say it's, um, I, I would say it, it's probably, probably 50, 50, uh, with, uh, with trophy and, and as far as numbers, you know, you'll, you'll catch, you'll catch lot, lots of smaller pike, uh, you know, in the, you know, say 24 to, to, to 30 inch range, uh, and then you'll catch, you know, you'll catch uh, quite a few in the, you know, up toward 40 inches. And, uh, also, um, you know, you'll, you'll catch, uh, you have good chances of catching them over 40 inches. Um, you know, with, with that being said, um, we don't hear too many, too many stories of pike over, over 50 inches, but we have had, um, a, a couple cases, uh, with, where, uh, one case for sure, um, a group, they were at our Elbow Lake outpost camp, uh, going back about, I'm going to say maybe six or seven years ago, uh, they, they had landed, um, I believe it was, was it, it was right around a 57 inch pike um, oh, and now wow. and that was that was actually confirmed by the game warden the game wardens were up uh, doing their midsummer check you know with the turbo beaver and they had actually landed uh, at the same time that they were they were bringing this fish in so when 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 they got out they they'd contacted us and had um, 
had mentioned about the, the giant pike that the guys had caught. Uh, of course, they, they released it, uh, which, which is good. Um, and actually, our, our first group this year at Muskrat, uh, they, they had a big pike on too. Uh, they, they weren't able to land it, but they did have it up beside the boat. And just from, you know, where they, where they said the, the head of the pike was to where the tail of the pike was, um, yeah, they, they guessed it to be, you know, just, just, um, you know, a, a quick measurement, they guessed it to be a over 50 inches, but, wow. but that, like I said, that, that we don't, um, we don't hear too many cases of pike being over 50. So it's, uh, it's, wow. it's pretty exciting, pretty exciting to hear for sure. That's a special fish. Um, question came in here. It is, oh, it's about flight times, you know, um, with the different outposts, you know, is it similar flight times or what's, what's the spectrum as far as how far, far the, the outpost camps are from the base? Uh, flight time, uh, flight time vary anywhere from, uh, you're looking at uh, a 10 minute flight to a closest camp all the way up to a 45 minute flight up to, uh, up to our further camp out. Great. Um, let me see here. Uh, you know, Louise is saying that her family's up there right now. Um, uh, fish quest says, okay, so here's someone who's been to a lot of your camp says he's been to, uh, I'm going to say these names wrong. Maybe Jamie, uh, okay. junk fruit, white fish times two, uh, Kello elbow, whittle times two, Percy muskrat. I mean, th this guy's done a lot of fishing with you. So yeah. 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 <laughs> And actually, uh, that Louise, uh, yeah, they're up at CAG right now. And uh, those are the ones I was telling you, they've been doing very well on the lake trout. So, uh, yeah, they've uh, they've sent us uh, some phenomenal pictures and look like they're having a great time. So, that, that's Well, great Louise, there you go. you're getting a real-time update. Your family's having a great time. So, let's uh, – yeah, so – so yeah, Jeff's asked a question about you know the border opening and and um, really I don't think either Jamie or I are qualified to answer that. Unfortunately, that's that's above I think our authority and pay grade to determine when that's going to open up. But you know now's the time of year where you know if you're Canadians, you know I think we can safely say Jamie that there's still opportunities to book if you're um, if they're so inclined. Oh for sure, for sure, yes we do. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, the other one I would say, as far as, you know, there's lots of people and, and a full disclosure, I'm one of them that are actually, they'll be looking at their 2021 trips right now um, because they know that the best weeks um, usually kind of get, get taken. So I would say anybody that's looking at their 2021 trips, you know, it's, it's not too early uh, to be considering where you're going. Um and so, Jeff, I'm not trying to avoid that question. I just don't think that we can we can competently answer it. So, uh, Jamie, let's slide over from uh, Pike to my personal favorite walleye. Um, th those are two gorgeous walleye we're looking at there. But tell us about the walleye fishing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as I said, all, all the lakes, uh, they do have walleye in them. Um, you know, walleye vary, you know, say most, most outpost uh, walleye vary in size from uh, on an average size, uh, you're looking at, you know, 16 to 19 inches. You know, some lakes uh, produce uh, an average size a little bigger than that. Um, you know, if we get up onto the Albany River where we have one, one outpost camp up there, and I believe the picture on the right, I, I'm pretty sure that one would be from the, from the Albany River. Uh, yeah, they seem to be seem to produce a little larger than average size. Um, so yeah, if you got uh, you know um, uh, walleyes of all all different size classes, uh, you know I, I believe that um, that promotes a, a good a good fishery. So you know you can get walleyes you know anywhere down from. 10, 12 inches, uh, all the way up. We've had guests catch them all the way up to, to 32 inches. So, you know, we get a lot, lot in a lot in the, you know, mid, mid twenties, uh, 25, 25, 26, 27 inch range, you know, and as well as a lot, lot of nice eater side, but, uh, you know, 16, 17, 18 inches. So. Yeah. I never met a walleye I didn't like. So, um, <laughs> All right. So here's Chris, who I know. And Chris wants to know, he's looking for state secrets. He wants to know what's your best lake for walleye? Which is your best walleye outpost? 
Not oh, to put you on the spot I, at I all. I don't know. I have I don't know. All, all of them. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, actually, um, if we, you know, like the, the staff here, if we, if we want to go to, if we want to go get fish for a, a fish fry, you know, we'll pick, we, we'll pick one of our closer lakes, uh, either Junk Fowl or, or Percy Lake and, uh, you know, we'll go out for a few hours and, um, yeah, it's, it, uh, the the fishing the fishing's awesome, but you know I mean that being said, uh, you know all all the lakes are all the lakes are, are great. Uh, you know Whitefish is a good lake. Um, the guys at, at uh, Muskrat are, are doing you know they're doing well on the walleye and like I said the Albany River. So um, like I said, if we if we go out for you know a few hours in the afternoon, if we want to have a, a fish fry, you know we kind of hit one of the closer ones, uh, Junk Fowl, Percy. Uh, you know, even uh, did Jamar Lake is, is a good producer of walleye. So, yeah, they're all they're they're all the lakes are stacked with walleye. So it's um, they're, good they're there. Uh, here's a question that came in about slot limits. So I would say, over and above the fish management zone that you're in, do you have slot limits on the outpost lakes? Um, well, actually, the the, um, the the zone two slot limit. Um, say on, on, on walleye you're you're allowed one over 18 and then the other yep. three have to be under but uh, we, we also have our own catch and release policy on trophy fish so uh, we ask all walleyes over 22 inches to be released um, and then they're going back to pike um, uh, there's a slot size on the pike between 27 and a half and 35 and a half inches so we ask all all uh, pike over 27 and a half be released back into the lake so yeah, we sure. do, we do that, and that's part of our just our own conservation, uh, you know, conservation policy on on all our lakes. That's good. That's good management. So I'm glad to hear you do that. Um, so now we talked a little bit about this that you've got. Uh, I, I would call this a fairly unique opportunity as far as uh, a fishing options. So brook trout. So where where do we go for the brook trout? Um, you can catch. Uh, obviously, you can go to uh, Cag Lake as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can fish for brook trout where your pitcher one leaves Cag and goes up into Kello. Uh, with the outpost, um, Kello Lake, you can uh, fish for brook trout where the Opechuan River comes in from Cag. You can catch brook trout there, and also you can catch brook trout at the outlet of Kello where the um, where the Opechuan eventually ends up into the Albany. Uh, Washi Lake up on the Albany River, you can catch uh, brook trout uh, upstream where the river comes in and then you can also catch brook trout uh, where, there, where the Albany River leaves Washi Lake. Uh, we do we have had guests catch uh, brook trout at Whittle Lake. Uh, there's a creek that comes in on the west end and then and then the creek leaves uh, at, at the northeast end and actually we have had um, guests that have been at Whittle right after ice out and they've actually caught brook trout at the mouth of the creek, we're right in the lake. So, and that's uh, actually that was a few years ago, and that was the first time I had had heard of uh, guys catching catching brook trout there. And then, if you're if you're up for an adventure, uh, quite a boat ride, uh, Percy Lake on the Little Current River. Um, it's like as I mentioned, it's quite a boat ride. So you'd be boating down about twenty miles uh, down the Little Current uh, down to Betty Falls. So you can park your boat above the falls, and uh, you can walk down and uh, and, and uh, fish the fish the falls for brook trout there also. So. That's awesome. And and uh, so your camp on the Albany on Washi that would be just downstream of uh, Makoka Mountain, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay, got it. Super. So I mean, there, there's there's a lot of options there for brooks. So that's good news. Yeah. yeah. Um, you get, did you get fly fishers up there? Uh, we do have some people that come up and, and fly fishing, um, but uh, I think most most of the most of the guys are, uh, you know, it's either fishing with uh, bait casters or, or spinning reels and stuff. But we do we do get uh, some fly fishing up here. Cool. Uh, now, not last last but not least, let's talk about Lakers because again, that's again that's some beautiful fish. So we know we can catch Lakers on on CAG. Uh, do you have other options for lake trout? Uh, no, Keg is uh, Keg is pretty much the the only lake up there, um, aside from from O'Sullivan Lake closer to Nikina. But uh, Keg is the only other lake that you can catch lake trout on. 
Yeah, well, you need the depth, right? So you need that colder water. That's right. That's right. We get uh, actually we we get um, a lot of people that uh, you say they're jigging for walleyes, or you know maybe jigging down 30, 35 feet for walleyes, and uh, yeah, next thing you know they got a lake trout on. So it's, <laughs> yeah, they kind of get a little bit of a surprise there. That's a nice. That's not a bad surprise. No, no, so. not at all. Not at all. So. So um, we're going to slide off here because we're going to move out of fishing for a second here. And again, folks, uh, we're, we are coming a little bit of the uh, the answer. So if you have any questions at all on stuff we already covered, fire them in there. If not, we're going to make sure that Jamie's got his contact details up here. But why don't you tell us a little bit about options for those of us that are interested in the hunting season? Yeah, in the hunting season. So we... Uh... Uh, the fishing season runs pretty much from uh, you know the, the third Saturday in in May right up till about the middle of September, and then we uh, we get ready for the moose hunt, and then we run the moose hunt right up until the middle of October. Um, so yeah, we uh, we have tags tags available. Um, you know, if you wish to go that route, uh, we have some some Ontario guests that they want to apply for their own tag, which is quite fine. Uh, and then we just uh, pretty much utilize our own uh, our own outpost cabins for for the moose hunt. So, and and uh, would you use all of them, Jamie, or do you kind of have specific ones that you know are the you know the highest chance of of success? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we we don't we don't use all of them, but uh, yeah, we just pick the ones that where the you know you have a have a better chance at uh, at bagging a moose. So. Beautiful, beautiful, and and. Um, you know, so if somebody goes in early season, gets a moose, would you run more than one group per site, or do you limit it? Um, it it all depends um, on on the number of moose taken. Um, you know, we we try to you know even 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 if a group has you know three, like say, let's just say for example, a, a group of. Um, four guys have three adult tags. Uh, we don't, you know, we, we try to limit it to one, one moose per two people. Um, so if, you know, if we have uh, two groups go in and they both get a moose, uh, you know, we, then, you know, we may, we, we may not book that for, we may not book the third group for even the following year. So it, it's kind of our own conservation, you know, on how, how many moose are taken out of each lake. Right. Uh, Smart. Because obviously, you know, it's it's like anything. If you take uh, you take too many moose out, then you know there's not going to be any any for the future years. So we we do try to keep a good uh, a good handle on that. Yeah, and you've got um, you've got you know you've got enough locations there, right? That uh, you know you can, you can easily move people around if if you had to. So. Oh, for yeah. sure, for sure. We get some, you know, some guys want to go back to the same location every year, every year, and then, you know, some guys want to just jump around, you know, to different lakes. And uh, so, yeah, it, no, it's all, cool. it, it's all good. So, listen, let's, um, we'll put this up here. I just want to make sure that I got your right contact information, you know, up there. But now, folks, you know, I mean, let's make it a free for all. I got, I'll, I'll start with you, Jamie. Is there anything that you think that you know we didn't talk about that we should cover? You know, you can pick. Just want to make sure that we uh, we get everything out. Um, I think we pretty much covered uh, covered everything. Uh, you know, maybe maybe one side note here with the uh, with the air service. If we have uh, so, some Ontario residents are looking to uh, say maybe they want to just pick a lake themselves where there's no camp or maybe a location on a river or or something to go, to go moose hunting or even fishing. Um, you know they can they can have that option, but basically be bringing all their own their tent and you know their canoe or whatnot, and you know we can drop them off at a at a at different locations. Um, and basically that would also be the, the you know the charter rate you know of the airplane. Um, also, if we got uh, some anybody want to go on canoe trips, um, you know we can we can uh, shuttle them shuttle them to wherever, you know, if there's a nearby road or we can fly them in, drop them off and then fly in and, and pick them up at the same time. So we, we do also offer that service also. That's great. So, you know, someone that's a bit more, I would say a bit more adventurous, you know, that that's a great option, right? And you're, you're probably right. hitting some untouched areas. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, we get the, actually we have a group that uh, they're looking to go down the, um, uh, 
they want to do the little current canoe trip, uh, a couple. So they want to do the little, uh, get dropped off at, um, at uh, O'Sullivan Lake. And then, you know, they want to get picked up uh, uh, about a week or 10 days later. So, you know, they, we do have a, there is a pickup spot on the little current or they can continue on all the way down to the Kanogamy River and we can pick them up there. And uh, we get some guys want to do the Agoki River, some guys want to do the Albany River. So, yeah, there's, there's various options for even, uh, you know, people into canoeing and that. Well, when you got a plane, you've got some access, right? So That's right. That's right. We can bring you wherever you want to go. So let me just put up here. Um, let's just get this on the screen there. That should be, should, should have your... Uh, your website there. So we got your website up on the top. We've got your uh, your telephone number. We got the email address. So if somebody wants to, you know, get a hold of you, I mean, obviously, if you're looking for this year, um, you're taking bookings now. If you want to talk about future years, I'm sure you're open to those conversations as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We do have openings for this year, uh, you know, and as well as uh, as well as next year. So if anybody's looking to book a trip, by all means, uh, get a hold of us. All right. So listen, folks, if you put a question in that we didn't get to, I'll scan back through them afterwards and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll type a response if I, if I feel qualified to do that. Jamie, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you sharing and, uh, you know, congrats on having a, a great business up there. And, and uh, I'd love to get up there myself sometime. Okay. Well, we'll have to make that arrangement for you to get up here, Scott. All right. All right. And everybody that uh, if you're watching live, thanks so much for giving us your time to do that tonight. And if you're watching this on a recording, we appreciate it just as much. And again, don't be afraid to reach out to uh, Jamie if you're looking to learn more about their options. If you're an outfitter yourself and you're looking to be on the show, let us know. We're uh, happy to feature as many as we can. So I'll end that broadcast and I will say have a good night, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. Have a good night.